Hey everyone, how's it going? In this problem, we're going to work through an example that involves maximizing the area of a trapezoid. The problem says, a copper sheet of width 24 centimeters is folded, as shown, to make spouting. Here's a cross-section area, and what we have to do is find the angle theta, which gives the maximum cross-sectional area. So the first thing we have to do is actually figure out how to calculate the area of a trapezoid. Now, there's an equation out there that says that the average of the bases times the height gives you the area of the trapezoid. But I'm actually going to approach it a slightly different way. I'm going to draw some imaginary lines going down like this, which is going to split my trapezoid up into two triangles and a rectangle. Now, um, because of this, I can make my area of the trapezoid equal to the area of the two triangles plus the area of the rectangle. So I'm going to redraw one of these triangles right over here. It's going to look something like that. And we're told in the problem that this angle right here is equal to theta. So if this entire thing is 90 degrees and this is theta, then I can say that this angle is 90 minus theta. Now we're also told that this side is equal to 8. And if you're familiar with trig, then you know that opposite of an angle we use sine and adjacent to an angle we use cosine. So I can say that this side is equal to 8 sine of 90 minus theta and this side is equal to 8 cosine of 90 minus theta. So how can I write my area of a triangle? Well that's just one half, so one half the base which is 8 sine of 90 minus theta times the height, so 8 cosine of 90 minus theta. Now I have two of these triangles so I can put a giant times 2 around this and to it I'm gonna add the area of the rectangle. So area, area of a rectangle is just base times height. My base is 8 as you can see right there so we have 8 times my height which is just the same height as here so it's just 8 cosine of 90 minus theta. So now let's simplify a few things this 2 and the 1 half they cancel out and I'm going to just uh, multiply these two 8's together so this 8 and that 8 it's gonna give me 64 sine 90 minus theta times cosine 90 minus theta and it's going to be plus I'm going to multiply these eights together and it's going to give me 64 cosine 90 minus theta okay so all of this is equal to the area and when we're trying to maximize area we always want to use the derivative. So to take the derivative, um, first thing you have to do is identify that this is going to be a product rule because we have sine times cosine. And within that, we're also going to use the chain rule because we have sine and then 90 minus theta. So um, what to do the chain rule, we're going to take the derivative of sine first and then the derivative of 90 minus theta. So what this is going to give us, we're still going to have our 64 out front, and we're going to have a big parenthesis. Now, the derivative of sine is cosine. We're going to have 90 minus theta. Now, the derivative of 90 minus theta is just negative 1 times the second, so cosine of 90 minus theta, and plus the derivative of the second, so negative sine 90 minus theta times the derivative of 90 minus theta is negative 1 again times this sine of 90 minus theta okay plus now we gotta take the derivative of this term so that is going to give us 64 times negative sine 90 minus theta times negative 1, which is the derivative of 90 minus theta again. So we have a lot of terms here, 
let's try to simplify some of them. So we get a prime is equal to 64. Now here we have cosine times cosine times negative 1, so negative cosine squared, 90 minus theta, plus we have negative sine times sine times negative 1, so plus sine squared, 90 minus theta, plus negative 1 times negative sine times 64 gives us just 64 sine of 90 minus theta. Awesome. So now what we're going to do, um, you can do this step. You don't have to do this step. I'm just going to distribute this 64 into both of these terms. So I'm going to get a prime is equal to negative 64 cosine squared of 90 minus theta plus 64 sine squared of 90 minus theta plus 64 sine of 90 minus theta. Now this is pretty difficult to calculate as is. Um, so uh, remember that when we're trying to figure out where our derivatives at a maximum, we always want to find where the derivative is equal to zero. So I'm going to set this equal to zero. I'm going to get zero equals negative 64 cosine squared of 90 minus theta plus 64 sine squared 90 minus theta plus 64 sine of 90 minus theta. And to figure this out, I'm actually just going to graph all of this on a, on a calculator and see where it hits zero. So here's our graph, and as you can see, we have a couple intersection points. We have one intersection point right here, we have another intersection point right over there, but we have to use some logic here. So we have one intersection that's at around 60 degrees and another that's at around 180. So would it make sense for theta to be 180 degrees? Well, not really, because that would make it a straight line, and obviously it's not a straight line. But would it make sense for it to be around 60 degrees? Well, yeah, that looks like it's around 60 degrees. So our correct answer is going to be right here. And it's going to be theta is equal to 60 degrees. And uh, you can find the area just by plugging 60 degrees into this equation right here for area. So I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, let me know, and as always, happy studying.